In archaeology, bone fragments and other haunting reminders of long dead people are given. But some discoveries paint particularly gruesome stories of past lives and deaths, from decapitated gladiators and vampire burials to the first toothy tumors and a mummified lung. I have collected interesting and fascinating archaeological finds that will give you goosebumps. Virgin of Lolaiko. She was discovered in 1999 in a mountaintop cave near the Lulalaco volcano. It seemed to the finder that the girl was just sleeping, her remains were so well preserved. The special conditions in the cave and the cold did their job skin, hair, and internal organs, none of this was destroyed by time. Since then, scientists have been scurrying around Virgo Lulialaco. They study every inch of the sacred child. Biologists, Geneticists and doctors conducted all kinds of tests and examinations, they learned the smallest details of the last weeks of her life. Scientists have found that before her death, the girl took huge doses of psychoactive substances and alcohol. With the help of hair analysis, which stores the history of what a person ate and took, it was possible to find out that about a year before her death, the girl's diet changed dramatically. This is consistent with rare descriptions of the Capacacha ritual. The culmination of the ritual is a human sacrifice. It was held once a year, and its victims were considered sacred. Even a year before the sacrifice, they were excommunicated from the family and prepared for the sacred act. For a whole year they were fed like kings and looked after around the clock. They were not only fed the most sumptuous food of the time, but they were also given medicines. Usually these were coca leaves and alcohol, sometimes hallucinogenic decoctions. Drugs were a way to communicate with the gods but they also served a more pragmatic purpose. They made children obedient, fearless, and disoriented. It looks like the girl was from a poor family. At least some of the genetic analysis data suggests this. The first years of her life, the girl experienced a lack of nutrients, then her diet was not rich in vitamins, and only in the last months of her life did her diet become quite diverse. Usually the victims of the Capacacha ritual are found with traces of violent death, but the Virgin of Lolalaco was not found to have bodily injuries. It seems that she was simply taken to a cold cave and left there with two other children. Their remains were much worse preserved. What was the purpose of the ritual? Nobody knows the exact answer, but there are a lot of assumptions. From regular offerings to the gods, to the desire of the ruler to increase his chances in the coming war. In any case, the girl was probably one of the last victims, the conquistadors had already landed on American soil. Soon the entire civilization of the Incas will fall from the diseases and guns that the invaders brought with them. Screaming Mummies Guanajuato is a small city in Mexico. 1833 cholera rages in the city, killing most of the people living there. As corpses accumulated, healthy and able-bodied people buried the dead in mass graves as quickly as possible to prevent the spread of the disease. Over time, the incidence of cholera began to decline, leaving people who managed to survive an unpleasant illness to continue their lives. In 1870, the local government taxed anyone who wanted to continue caring for the graves of their relatives buried in mass graves forever. Failure to pay this tax will result in the bodies being exhumed and placed in a warehouse. Benjamin Franklin was right when he said, nothing is certain but death and taxes, and I will add that both are equally hated. This tax was very unpopular among the people of Guanajuato, and no one wanted to pay it. As promised, local authorities proceeded to exhume the bodies. What they found shocked them. The bodies are surprisingly well preserved, they were actually mummified. Scientists have found that the unique composition of the soil, dry weather with low humidity kept the bodies from decomposition. But the most eerie and terrifying discovery was when the townspeople looked at the facial expressions of the mummies. The faces of many of them reflected the horror that they experienced when they woke up in a coffin and realized that they had been buried alive. A legitimate question we should ask ourselves is where this theory of dead people coming back to life comes from. Could there be another explanation for these terrifying screaming expressions? Perhaps, but the resurrection of the dead theory gained more credibility after the discovery of the body of Ignacia Aguilar, who suffered from a strange illness, due to which her heart beat so slowly that it seemed to stop. Her family had to deal with this strange disease several times, 
because after a while her heart began to beat normally again, but one day Ignacia's heart stopped beating for more than a day. The next day, her relatives decided to bury her. In 1870, when the bodies were exhumed, she was seen biting her hand on her face and with much blood in her mouth. It did not take too much imagination for people to conclude that Ignacia was one of those unfortunates who died, and when she came to life, they realized with horror that she had been buried. Let's digress from this horror story for a minute or two and turn to science for a rational explanation of how it is possible to mistakenly diagnose a dead person when he is actually alive. One possible explanation could be that the Guanajuato mummy suffered from Lazarus syndrome, which is defined as a delay in the return of spontaneous circulation after cardiopulmonary resuscitation. In patients declared dead after cardiac arrest, an impromptu restoration of cardiac activity occurs. The syndrome is named after Lazarus of Bethany, who, according to the New Testament of the Bible, was brought back to life by Jesus Christ four days after his death. Since 1982, when the Lazarus phenomenon was first described in the medical literature, at least 38 cases have been reported, including a case in 2014 in which an 80-year-old woman was frozen alive in a hospital morgue. There are two types of death, clinical death and biological death. Clinical death is defined as the absence of a pulse, heartbeat, and respiration, while biological death is defined as the absence of brain activity. Based on this definition, one might think that it is easy to declare a person dead, but not everything is so simple. There are a number of diseases in which a person may appear dead when they are not, namely hyperthermia when the body experiences a sudden drop in temperature caused by prolonged exposure to cold. Catalepsy, a trance-like state such as epilepsy. Confined space syndrome, complete paralysis of voluntary muscles. Returning to our horror story, Guanajuato is home to a whole group of mummies with expressions of extreme pain and pure horror. Death looks ugly, but these facial expressions are not normal. They are too excited and expressive for a deceased person. The screaming mummies of Guanajuato are, without a doubt, clear evidence of your worst nightmare. On November 1st and 2nd, Mexico celebrates Dia de los Muertos at the Day of the Dead, when families welcome the souls of their deceased relatives for a brief reunion that includes food, drink, music, and celebration. Viking Cemetery At the word Viking funeral, most modern people imagine a burning dracker carrying the body of a fallen warrior into the sea. The internet is replete with stories about the organization of the Viking funeral of a deceased person and disputes about whether it is legal to carry out this procedure. Do fire safety regulations allow shooting a ship with a burning arrow? All these entertaining questions have nothing to do with how the real Vikings buried their dead. The imposing image of a burning ship is a figment of the imagination of romantics and filmmakers, although not without reason. Where did it come from, and how did the ancient Scandinavians actually bury their dead? At the same time, we know very much and very little about the religion of the ancient Scandinavians. The texts of sagas and legends collected in the Elder and Younger Edda have survived to this day. It is from there that we know the images of gods and heroes, the stories of their exploits and adventures, and, of course, the predictions of Ragnarok. Some of the views of the ancient Scandinavians on their posthumous fate are also stated there. According to their ideas, the brave warriors who died in battle went to the halls of the gods of Valhalla. There they have to feast and have fun waiting for the final battle with giants and monsters. Those who died unworthily and cowardly ended up in hell a cold and dark place where nothing good awaited them. During the end of the world, they had to fight on the side of the forces of evil. Few people know that in addition to these two options, there was also a third one. Half of all the Scandinavian warriors who fell in battles, according to the sagas, went into the possession of the goddess Freya, the patroness of nature and life and the posthumous fate of women was not reflected in any way in the Eddas, and we can only guess what the Vikings thought about it. We know little about exactly how religious ideas were reflected in the daily life of the ancient Scandinavians, about their daily rituals, rituals and holidays. Although they already had runic writing in pagan times, materials such as paper or parchment were not. This meant that they could only leave very short text carved on stones, trees, and wooden boards, Sagas and other poetic sources were recorded already in the Christian period, so their authors paid less attention to specific rites. Of course, scientists can reconstruct something. It also helps to analyze the texts and compare them with the rites of other peoples, for example, the ancient Germans. 
and there were texts about the Scandinavians themselves, created by their contemporaries, for example, the Arab traveler Ibn Fadlan. It was he who wrote that his relatives put the dead Viking in a boat or ship, which they then set on fire. However, Ibn Fadlan did not write anything about the fact that the ship was launched, and many researchers questioned the reliability of his records. Archaeology remains the main source of knowledge about the ancient Scandinavians. In fact, their main burial method was graves and mounds. Archaeologists have found and unearthed many such burials in Scandinavia, Iceland, and northern Germany. Three places stand out in particular, representing huge cemeteries, Linholmhoge, Hedeby, and Burka. Thanks to excavations in these and other burials, we know exactly how the Scandinavians buried people. These excavations inspired pop culture to create the concept of Viking burial. Archaeological finds have created the idea that the Scandinavians tried to supply the deceased on his last journey with all the necessary things. A person, if he was not a slave, was never buried without household items and military equipment. For a simple warrior, his weapons were placed in the grave for professional artisans, for example, blacksmiths, their tools, for women jewelry. The burial places of high-ranking northerners, who were buried along with their riches, have been best preserved to this day. Treasures, weapons, animals, especially horses, accompanied the deceased to the next world. In some cases, even servants or his wife were buried with him. However, this kind of human sacrifice was rather the exception. More often, the Scandinavians limited themselves to the burial of slaves and concubines who died of natural causes. But even without casualties, the leader's funeral was an expensive undertaking. The Viking mounds are not as impressive as the tombs of the pharaohs, but their construction still required a lot of effort. The northerners literally poured an artificial hill over the grave of the deceased. Scientists suggest that in addition to the ritual, this could also have political significance. The height of the hill and stories about how a rich leader was buried emphasized the power of his descendants in the eyes of neighbors. Was there a burning ship? Sometimes the ship really became part of the mourning ceremony. True, the Vikings did not set fire to the ship at sea more often they pulled it out onto land and used it as a huge coffin in which they put the things of the deceased. Of course, such a funeral was the privilege of only those who had their own ship at their disposal and whose descendants could afford to part with it. There was also a symbolic version of the so-called stone ship. This was the name of a series of stone blocks which were located around the perimeter of the burial in such a way that they gave it the shape of a ship. The idea of cremation as a way to dispose of a dead body is also not a fantasy. In various graves, archaeologists find evidence that the deceased and all his possessions were burned. In favor of cremation, the lines from the Inglinga saga also speak. 1. Decided that all the dead should be burned at the stake along with their property. He said that everyone should come to Valhalla with the good that was with him at the stake, and use what he himself buried in the ground, and throw the ashes into the sea or bury them in the ground, and pour out a barrow in memory of noble people, and put a tombstone over all standing people. Viking funerals are a good example of how high mythological ideas are intertwined with real rituals and folk beliefs. While the texts of the Edda describe the afterlife as something that depends on the actions of a warrior during life, Real Scandinavians first of all made sure that the funeral went right and that the deceased had all the necessary things at his disposal. And already in the 19th and 20th centuries, individual elements of these rituals and performances inspired romantics and screenwriters to create their own third concept, unlike what happened in reality. Tallinn Man, on May 8, 1950, Pete Miners found a corpse in the Bjeldskavdal peat bog in Denmark looking so fresh that the workers at first thought it was a recent murder victim. The man was lying at a depth of 2.5 meters in the fetal position. On the head was a pointed sheepskin hat with fur inside, held by a belt under the chin. A leather belt was tied around the waist. There were no other clothes, probably rotted. The short hair was almost completely hidden under the cap, and the stubble on the chin indicated that the man had not shaved on the day of his death. A noose of woven leather was tied tightly around the mummy's neck. According to radiocarbon analysis, the man died around 375-10 BC. Based on the strontium isotope content in his hair, this man has spent the last year in Denmark, but has traveled at least 20 miles in the last six months. X-rays showed that the man's head was intact, but the heart, lungs, and liver were well preserved. A man from Tallinn died at the age of 40, his height was about 1.61 meters. 
Investigators concluded that the man died by hanging and not by strangulation. The rope left visible furrows in the skin under the chin and on the sides of the neck. However, there was no mark on the back of the neck where the looped knot could be located. Although the cervical vertebrae were not damaged as is often the case with hanging, the x-ray showed that the tongue was swollen, a sign of death on the gallows. However, researchers disagree on whether the man was executed or sacrificed. The position of the body and the fact that the eyes and mouth of the deceased are closed testify against execution. The last food of the Tallinn man is porridge made from cultivated and wild seeds, including barley and flax. The man last ate at least 12 hours before his death. No traces of meat or fresh fruit were found in the gastrointestinal tract, suggesting that the killing took place in winter or early spring, when such foods were scarce. In 1976, the Danish police analyzed the fingerprints of a man from Tolling. The body is on display at the Silkeborg Museum in Denmark. Although only the head is well preserved today, the rest has been reconstructed from the skeleton. Alas, in the middle of the 20th century, the methods of conservation of such finds were not sufficiently developed, and the mummy was badly damaged. We have already heard all the riddles about Egyptian mummies a hundred times, but the mummies of other civilizations are something new and interesting. And here is Shinjui, and she was the wife of the imperial ruler of Changsha during the Han Dynasty. Perhaps her name would have sunk into oblivion if she had not been mummified after her death. The body of this Chinese woman miraculously survived 1,100 years after her death, and today scientists are puzzling over the mystery of Lady Dai's mummy. China, Nawangdu Hills in Hunan Province. Here in 1992, the Chinese army held large-scale military exercises. In one of the hills, sappers dug a tunnel and suddenly stumbled upon a mysterious structure. At a depth of 12 meters there was a tomb in the form of an inverted pyramid. It contained four sarcophagi neatly nested into each other. In one of them lay the mummy of a woman wrapped in silk. Her body did not look like either ancient Egyptian or Peruvian mummies. It was preserved in a completely unusual way. The opening of the mysterious mummy gave amazing results. The body weighed 35 kilograms. The joints retained mobility, and the muscles did not lose elasticity, even the skin retained its natural shade. Human or animal mummies are dead bodies whose skin and organs have been preserved either accidentally or intentionally. Tissue degradation can be prevented by lack of air, low humidity, high or low temperatures, or exposure to chemicals. This means that the body does not decompose as long as it is stored in a dry and cool place. Mummies have been found on every continent. For example, there are over a million animal mummies in Egypt, mostly cats. In ancient Egypt, it was believed that when a pharaoh died, he simply passed into the underworld and turned into one of several gods that people worshipped at that time. The Egyptians used the process of mummification to preserve bodies and prevent them from decaying. Intentional mummification was first recorded as early as the Second Dynasty, that is, in 3400 BC. It soon became an integral part of the Egyptian funeral ritual, of course, not for everyone. Sometimes it took up to 70 days to properly embalm the body. In Asia, mummies are preserved only by accident due to the fact that people were buried in the right place, where the environment itself acted as a means of preserving the body. Therefore, Asian mummies are most often found in the desert regions of Iran and the Dream Basin. Mummies have also been found in wetter Asian climates, but are very difficult to recover as bodies decay very quickly after being removed from graves due to the warm and humid conditions they are suddenly exposed to. She is revealed to have been a wealthy Han Dynasty Chinese matron who died around 160 BC. E. At the age of approximately 50 years, her mummy is one of the best preserved from antiquity. Xinjui's tomb was arranged in the form of an inverted pyramid and was located at a depth of 12 meters underground. Her body was wrapped in silk and placed in four ornate sarcophagi. Her body did not look like either ancient Egyptian or Peruvian mummies. It was preserved in a completely unusual way. The mummy floated in 80 liters of a yellowish liquid. Five minutes after the opening of the mysterious crypt, this substance literally evaporated. There was not a trace left of it. These measures made it difficult for air, moisture, and bacteria to enter the body, thereby slowing down the decomposition process. The grave was covered with five tons of coal and a meter layer of clay. A 15-meter embankment was poured above ground level. Shinjui accompanied up to a thousand items to the other world, most of which were intended to meet her daily needs.
The food was arranged on 30 bamboo plates along with recipes for the deceased's favorite dishes. Dozens of books on medicine were found in Shinjui's sarcophagus. They described to the smallest detail the most complex operations to increase the brain, to transplant and bypass the heart. In ancient China, they knew about the medicine of the future. Another find that amazed archaeologists was the Vale of Shinjui. The map was drawn on a piece of silk about a meter by a meter in size. It shows the territories of three Chinese provinces at a scale of 1 to 180,000. The map looked like it was compiled from photographs from low Earth orbit. The silk map was compared with modern images of Chinese territories taken by NASA satellites. Incredible accuracy struck American scientists. Not a single mistake. At autopsy, blood was found in the veins of the deceased, and the internal organs were preserved as if death had occurred only a few weeks ago. The joints retained the ability to move, the skin, the elasticity. The study of the mummy confirmed that the aristocrats of ancient China did not lead a healthy lifestyle. They ate a lot of fatty foods, did not move much, which led to overweight and narrowing of the coronary arteries. It is assumed that his lifetime weight is 120 to 140 kilograms with a height of 150 to 150 to centimeters. Shinru had problems with his spine and tapeworms were found in his intestines. The unusual embalming of the body, which allowed it to remain so, books on medicine, a case map how to explain such a deep knowledge of the ancient Chinese in medicine and topography. Why is this knowledge not saved? More than 30 years have passed, and the secrets of the mysterious Shinru sarcophagus have not yet been revealed. There are a lot of secrets and mysteries in the world, and a person does not have enough life to even unravel them and even learn about them. And we will end the video with a quote from the French mathematician Pierre, Simon Laplace what we know is limited, and what we do not know is infinite. Be sure to subscribe so as not to miss an interesting and informative video. Also please like and comment.